people who like to talk about politics. And I was the cafe owner. I'd say, you know, I know there's only one topic on your mind was Scalia murdered. What do you think? And people would, yeah, this, no, no, you're nuts. I don't think so. Why? That's what people would do. So I said we need a Warren Commission like federal investigation. Right, right away, the idiots, the haters who have nothing to do said, oh, you're a, you're a liberal because you want a Warren Commission. Moron. I said a Warren Commission like federal investigation, idiots. I didn't say the Warren Commission, morons. Savage said an immediate autopsy of the body is needed. There was no medical examiner present. There was no one who declared the death. It was there. It was done by telephone from a U.S. Marshal appointed by Obama himself. Did you know that? Did you know the U.S. Marshal was appointed by Obama himself? You didn't know that either. I had to tell you that yesterday. Oh, that's nothing. In an essay posted on his website, Savage asked what would happen if Donald Trump were in the White House in his final year and the justice was Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I've asked that already. We, have a, we had a razor-thin th savior of the conservative, or shall I say traditional, ways in America. Antonin Scalia, who was found dead under suspicious circumstances, said Savage, and now this character in the White House who nobody with a rational mind should trust is trying to railroad the Loretta Lynch down our throats as his number one choice for the Supreme Court. Savage said somebody must stop Obama's nomination to the court so the choice can be made by the new president. And I hope it's you, Savage told Trump. Savage noted Scalia's role. Oh, this is interesting. Who is this guy, Savage? Interesting. Savage noted Scalia's role in the Supreme Court's February 9th decision that temporarily blocks Obama administration rules to limit greenhouse gas emissions from power plants. Really? This guy, Savage, said what? He said, Donald, you know that just five, six days before Scalia was found dead with a pillow over his face, he was the lead voice against Obama's attempts to railroad that green gangsterism down our throats? He was the one who, who killed it. He was the one who killed it, Donald. Boy, this guy's savage. He's on the radio? What is he on the radio? He's on the radio right now. You're listening to him. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. It's the Savage Nation. And the question is, the suspicious circumstances surrounding the death of Supreme Court Justice Scalia are uh, bothering about 30 to 50 million people around the planet. That's a very small number, I recognize. After all, we're not the uh, voters for the Democrats, generally. They've already assumed this was or, uh, just a heart attack. There's no questions. Let's move on. It just shows you how naive they are or how... There's no words for it. If it was a liberal justice who died under similar circumstances with a Republican president, you know the banner headline would be demanding, demanding a commission, an investigation, asking why the body was uh, you know, no, not subjected to an autopsy, etc. I don't want to repeat myself. There's a drawing going around on the internet that's 124 years old, says rabbit or, rabbit or duck. And they ask you, is it a rabbit or a duck? It was published in 1892 in a German magazine. Do you see an animal or do you see two? And according to a psychologist, your ability to flip between seeing a rabbit and a duck in the drawing is indicative of your creative prowess. Now with the Scalia death, do you see a rabbit or do you see a duck? Probably most of you see nothing. Because I'm a highly creative individual, I see not only a rabbit and a duck, but I see a cover-up. I see a rabbit, a duck, and a hat. Joining us right now is a reporter for Infowars.com, Joe Biggs. Joe, you're down in Texas. Where are you, near the judges' uh, uh, chambers? Uh, we are in Marfa, Texas, just outside of County Judge Cinderella Guerrero's office. Now, Cinderella... Cinderella couldn't pronounce the words myocardial infarction. How, how could she declare he died of a myocardial infarction, then change her mind? Well, here's the thing that you have to understand, Dr. Savage, is the first two justices of the peace that were called were out of town that day. They were about 120 miles away at some event. You mean to tell me when that phone, came, that phone call came in, that name came over the wire, they didn't drop what they were doing and take the time to drive a few hours to come out here. Now, before that... John Poindexter, the guy who owns the ranch, called the feds. The feds flew in via helicopter. You mean to tell me they couldn't have picked one of these people up? Instead, it was passed on to a third person, Judge Cinderella. Now, in the past, in 2016, <laughs> she has made some botched calls before. 
Oh, really? What did Cinderella do in the past that was questionable? In 2013, there was an incident in Big Ben where an unconscious woman was laying on the train tracks. A train ran over her and sliced her into pieces. Now, the, the railroad company came out, did their own uh, internal investigation, said that it should be investigated. The family came out and said they wanted an investigation. They called Cinderella, and she goes, oh, nope, suicide, and ended it right there. Did not go in, so, did not do an investigation. So, so, so Cinderella is, is uh, who is she? She's a low. She's a low grade local judge. Pretty much, she's a county judge here in Marfa. Martha, Texas. Wow. And what is her experience in law? Did she go to law school, or was it uh, a degree earned uh, online? I don't have I all the information on. She can't pronounce myocardial, but she knows it was a heart attack, and that is a big deal, by the way. Why should we believe her when she changed her opinion? after she was laughed out of the courtroom herself. I know. I mean, there's a lot of things surrounding this. I mean, like you said before, and I've heard other people say, that this was a Republican president, a ranch owned by a Republican donor, and it was a liberal judge who died out there. The entire left would be screaming and crying, asking for an investigation. As soon as this man came down over the wire, his name came down over the wire, this should, they should have been locked down. They should have called for an investigation. They should have done an autopsy, toxicology, and all of that. Instead, they take the body and drive it to El Paso. Now, we have an investigator in El Paso right now who just spoke to the mortician who did the embalming. They just drained his fluids and threw them into the El Paso sewage. Oh, my God. You're kidding me. They did that already? Yes, that has already been done. Oh, my God. Oh, so they're covering it up already. So there is either a cover-up going on or serious gross negligence. Done no, no, this is not. No, 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 sorry. No, no. If they threw the fluids out without holding on to them, is, is that standard procedure in a case like this to throw the fluids in the garbage? Well, the standard procedure in, in, by Texas law is if there is any kind of instance where you think that there could have been outside forces that it would have caused a death, i.e. a pillow over the face when the body's found, automatically an autopsy is supposed to be done. Now, the fact that that was ignored, then passed on to two people who come back and say, uh, Juanita Bishop comes back and says, oh, well, I would have called for an autopsy, but I was kind of busy. So two people said they would have called for an autopsy, but they pass it on to another person who already has a record of just calling in and going, yep, this is fine, this is natural causes, don't look here, don't worry about it, just keep going. Mr. Biggs, other than my show and Alex's show, no one else in the media is covering this. Why do you think that is? Because people are just, they, they take what they hear. So many people out there are sheep. They turn on Fox, they turn on CNN, and they're force-fed stuff. Listen here, Dr. Savage, there are no reporters here. <laughs> but guess what? I've stood outside this person's office and requested an interview with her, and she will not talk to us because her secretary says she's too busy talking to media. But there's no media here. There's no media at the ranch. There's no media anywhere. No one's come out here. But everyone is too busy to take the time because they are scared to talk about it. This is frightening. This is terrifying. You would think this would happen in Paraguay or in Uruguay in the 1970s, but it's happening here now under under uh, our dear leader. You know, Where is the Republican Party? Has one politician called for an investigation? A single one? Hold on, there's a motorcycle going by. Say it again, sir. Joe, has a single politician, one politician, called for an investigation? Um, not that I'm aware of, but all I hear are uh, homicide investigators. Uh, there was a, one of the main homicide investigators for uh, D.C. Uh, people, uh, police all over the country have said that this should be investigated. There is an outcry by people who are specialized in this. Now you have this, uh, you know, uh, Texas or this U.S. Marshal that came out. He's not even trained in homicide, and yet he's the one calling and going, oh, you know, this is just natural causes. Let's pass it well, well, right. He was that, that U.S. Marshal was appointed by Obama. Have you interviewed him? No, not yet. Uh, where is he? Texas or Washington? Um, Texas, I believe. So we're waiting on here. We just got into Marfa. We're going to the ranch next. We're going to be here for the next few days. We've got a long list of people that we will be. I, I, I suggest that you bring your food with you. Uh, I, I would suggest you don't accept their hospitality for uh, any, any meals. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely throwing the pillows off the bed. <laughs> By the way... Do you know anyone who sleeps with a pillow over their head? I haven't met one yet. I've never heard of it. I've actually stopped and talked to a few people and asked them if they thought that that was normal. 
and everyone's going, uh, no, that's pretty, uh, pretty well, ridiculous. maybe it's normal, but you see, it, it's maybe it's not normal in that Texas county, but it could be normal amongst Italian Americans of, of uh, 79 years of age. We have to interview all 79 year old male Italian Americans and see what percent percentage of them sleep with pillows over their head because I'm sure the Washington Post will report that over 90 percent of it of male Italian Americans over 70 years of age sleep with pillows over their head well Scalia was just in Hong Kong and Shanghai with a friend and uh, the friend even came out and released a statement saying that he was as strong as ever so you've got this man who yeah he's got some shoulder issues he had an MRI uh, that Thursday prior you know but still, that doesn't mean that we should just... How, how could he go hunting if he has a shoulder injury? Exactly. And that was my question to my other uh, colleagues in the car earlier. If he knowingly had a shoulder injury, how is he going to be out here quail hunting, shooting a shotgun, if he has this? And why does he normally have a security team, all of a sudden not have a security team, and come into a lion's den? A man who has been awarded by Obama, a man who contributes to the, the Democrat Party, that was a setup. Joe, a second series of questions. I understand that Mr. Scalia's son brought him to the lodge and then left. Is that true? Is that a factual reality? Um, we have not heard that yet at this time. We were told that his son, one of his sons, he has a priest for a son and two lawyer sons in Washington, D.C. One of them brought him to the ranch, told him about it, and either brought him to it or arranged the trip for him. I think you ought to ask the son what happened. Yeah, we just heard that there was a close colleague. That's what I was told by another one of my colleagues here. He said that he heard that, he heard that it was a close colleague of his that came, and they weren't sure if he stayed until the end or if he left uh, before the, the death or murder. Well, I, I would think a homicide investigation. I'm sorry, there is no investigation. What am I thinking? But, but if there was an investigation, wouldn't they want to know who the close friend was? Yeah, exactly. You know, a, a B movie, a B movie with a script like this would be laughed out of the theater if they, if they said, no, no, no need, no foul play here. Did you ever see the movie A Touch of Evil by Orson Welles, set in a Texas border town? Uh, no, sir. That's what the, the, no, nobody remembers these classic movies, but I highly recommend A Touch of Evil by Orson Welles, set in a Texas border town. Well, you got your work cut out for you. You're going you're gonna to speak to Cinderella, you think, today? Or is she going to come uh, down and speak to you? Or she's very busy speaking to the media, of whom there's no one present. There's no one from the media, but she's speaking to them somewhere. But then she's Cinderella, Joe, you see. Cinderella could be having conversations that are imaginary. Yeah, she's been, uh, <laughs> she traded in her... Uh... Oh, sorry, that truck just drove by. Yeah, she traded <laughs> something for a glass shoe, and it definitely was She traded... <laughs> She traded her glass slipper for a glass chin. <laughs> this is very funny. Conspiracy theories swirl. Will Texas governor call for an investigation? So let me ask you the last question, Joe. Texas governor, Abbott, your InfoWars website from Alex Jones says he has looked into other controversial allegations. Is there any chance that Texas governor Greg Abbott will look into this? I would hope so. I mean, he's been a pretty stand-up guy thus far. I mean, he's definitely been someone who's been on the ball and done a lot of the right things. I mean, I would hope maybe at this point in time he's trying to gather information and waits till he gets enough to, to base some kind of a, you know, a, a reasoning off of it. I'm not sure, but I would hope so. I mean, that's someone that we need to really stand up and go out there and say this is ridiculous, that nothing's been done, and make these people do this the proper way. In the past, Governor Abbott ordered the Texas State Guard to monitor Jade Helm 15 to safeguard Texans' constitutional rights, private property, and civil liberties, so he is very aware of constitutional issues. Last year, the same governor also launched an investigation into Planned Parenthood following uh, allegations that the abortionists were running an under-the-table baby part-for-profit scheme. So he's a good guy. Can we encourage the governor to do what the federal government will not do? Well, of course. I mean, everybody can get on their phone, their emails, and encourage this guy to definitely uh, reach out. I mean, all you got to do is flip on the TV, and everyone is talking about this. But no, no hold one... it. Wait, where are they talking about it? Where are they talking about it? Oh, it's Fox, you'll see people talking about it, but they don't really talk about it in the right way, the right context. It's more of people, uh, you know, arguing, complaining about who should be next, who should be next. Yes, oh, so sure, they're talking about who, that's right, they've already gone past the sucker punch, 
Now they're talking about